bus is going quickly. We have strollers and pedestrians and skateboarders right. and cyclists and wheelchairs, and we have to maneuver through all that. Fifth, see, an engine just started. I think it's a parked car. This is my sounds every day, and I love it. I was looking at a piece of paper, and I kept blinking because suddenly the words looked like fuzzy little ants, and I couldn't make anything out. Mm -hmm. And so my husband drove me to the doctor where I, I demanded, I pleaded magnification, glasses, something, anything to help. And he said, I'm sorry, Melissa. There's nothing more we can do. You're going blind. Skateboards, bicycles. It's like going through a slalom through the city. At the age of three, I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And so I remember always going to the rheumatologist for the arthritis and then to the ophthalmologist. Most of us still have some residual vision. So I have no peripheral vision. So if I look straight this way, I actually, I know that you're there, but I, I cannot see you. So no peripheral. You'll see me kind of look left to right just to see a little more of my world, but it's very foggy and blurry. Can so you... I'm sure, Hal, you're a super handsome man, yes. but you just look like a fuzzy blob to me. Oh, wow. Oh, oh boy. They tell you in class, Melissa, you're getting a female black Labrador retriever named Camry. I was like, Camry? Why do I get the reliable sedan? How come <laughs> I don't get the sports car? <laughs> but then I met this. The dogs do not know when the lights are red or green. She stops at the corner, and now I can hear my cross traffic, so I know it's not safe to cross the street. I'm taught to learn to listen to my parallel traffic. And when I hear the surge, I know when my parallel traffic is going, it's safe for me to cross the street. OK, it's our parallel. Can we forward? I don't follow pedestrians, because pedestrians aren't always they're, they're jaywalking. They're going off off the curb with uh, two seconds left. Good girl. So she paused, and so I knew that was the curb forward. And having a guide dog takes it to the next level because if there are electric vehicles that I can't hear and I give her the command to go forward, she will intelligently disobey. Stopping at curbs changes in elevation. The amazing thing is they stop for overhead hangings. So anything that you're going to physically bump into. They keep you from bumping. And have you ever fallen down, just, you know, just gone down on, yes. on the pavement? Yes. And what's the, what do you do then? Time, the one time I did was getting off a bus and I actually tore my patent. <gasps> oh no. That's the big difference with the cane. You have to bump into things to learn to move around and they're going to move you around things. My world expanded because suddenly there were things to do. I walked around the neighborhood. 10, 15 a.m. Oh, she talks fast. In the suburbs, it's a neighborhood, but I feel more safe in downtown, which people are like, that's impossible. But mm -hmm. if somebody snatched or did something to me in, in the suburbs, nobody's out no, there. Nobody would witness it nobody because they're it. inside watching their big screen TV. Exactly. Around here, it's just so much easier to interact with folks, interact with the sort of things that people like to get out and do. David, we met in, in college. I even remember the class. It was uh, Poli Sci 203. It was my second year there. It was his first year. She's like, I'm here to get an education, not to meet a boy. For a while, I had my license. She could see and was driving. The thought of that now scares me. <laughs> it was a little interesting to see her idea of what a safe lane change was relative to most common ideas about it. Ever since then, he's been just just an amazing guy and so how long have you been married now and so uh, this January it'll be 19 years it's really frustrating when you go places and people would ask him can she would she like this would she like that I can still think for myself I just can't see that's it do you ever people amplify their voices yes yeah which I find hilarious yeah. that it's like what are you doing <laughs> Let's I can hear you quite fine. Oh. You don't have to yell. You have to laugh at it. It like throws you for a lot of different loops. You know, but some people always, oh, there's a blind person and they stay like super still and quiet. Like <laughs> they're not going to see me, don't I? You know, and it's just like 
of course, she's not affronted by much of anything, so. It's me, I'm just a person, it's fine. And excuse me if I almost sit on your lap, I'm, you know, trying Do you know to where the dash picks up? Ah, I hear it coming. What is the protocol for touching a guide dog or not? Never reach out and just pet without asking. Main Street and First Street. Transfer point to Dash East City West. Oh, is she in the way? No, her tail is sticking out. That's the only thing. Well, I, when I first got on, I thought, no, because I had sunglasses on, I thought she was a piece of luggage. So <laughs> people do. If you can avoid doing the googly talk as we walk by, uh -huh. that would be great. Feel free to ask, but I'm probably going to say no. It's not, I'm not saying no to you personally. No. It's just right now I'm concentrating. So if I'm counting blocks, because I'm counting to get to my destination. Excuse me, do you know where the red line is? What? And if somebody goes, oh, puppy, puppy, yeah. puppy, and she turns me around, I could suddenly be going in a different direction. I get disoriented. Right. Aha, uh -huh. this is not where I thought we were going. Right, Cam? But it's good to tell people, so we know. Yeah. Does Melissa know about the mustache? Uh, she does know about the mustache. Is it harder to have a mustache than not to have a mustache? Um, depends on the mustache, right? Basic mustache is pretty yeah. easy because it's nice yeah. not to shave, but. What you doing, Camry? Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to talk, baby talk to the guide dog. When it's time to go out, the the level of excitement that she gets is crazy. And then once it's on, she's like all business. And she's like, okay, I'm ready to go. And when you put it on, she knows it's game time. Um, uh, two days a week with Benita, and she's really been helping me out with my flexibility and growth training. The, Melissa's the first client that I've ever had that's non sighted, so I learned. You can say the B word blind. <laughs> <laughs> she's blind. <laughs> this is a brand new suit. Is it really? Yeah. Very handsome. All right. Do you have a message for people that just leave their their weights and, and ropes on the floor? Please pick up after yourself. We do everything everybody else does. We just do it a little different. I live in an awesome town, a LA, in downtown, and be part of the Renaissance and part of the community. Helicopters, that's also a typical sound we hear. Life is good, I travel. We've actually hit all seven continents. Uh, Antarctica was the, the last one we hit. It's all a street to them, and they're just happy to get you where you need to go. She's at my feet like my carry-on luggage, curls up and goes to sleep, and pretty much says, let me know, Mom, when you need me. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Guide Dogs for the Blind was started back in 1942 to help uh, wounded veterans coming back from the war who have lost their sight to give them and gain their independence back with a guide dog. Since that first guide dog in 1942, we have never charged a penny for the training going to campus. There's no government funding. It's all uh, through private donations and the generosity of people and foundations. Uh, I've started an alumni chapter here in Los Angeles called Paws of Fame, because it's all about our <laughs> four <like> pod <laughs> angels. Even though we are blind and, and disabled, visually impaired with guide dogs, we are still your customers, your clients, mm -hmm. your theater patrons. Mm -hmm. It's a partnership between the two of us.
See, the kindness of strangers helped out twice. <laughs> What's the hardest thing uh, about being with Melissa and helping, helping her navigate the city and your home and with Camry? What's the hardest thing? Um, I'll be honest, the hardest thing is uh, dodging dog poop on the sidewalk. Now arriving, Pershing Square Station. Exit here, Angel's Flight and the Grand Central Market. Camry, forward. <laughs> <laughs>